The truth is, the Feeny pushed him twice. First time was into the electrical pole, then that's when the cable broke. And Dougie tried his best to run away from him. Feeny caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Doug being electrocuted. It all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm. So after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I just have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Fay, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Miss Hawthorne, previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. I know, I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeney. So that's why you basically lied and quit it to the court? I was a bad girl, I know. Uh, Mr. Judge? Yes? Can you please, please forgive little old me? <laughs> of course he won't! What you did is just called perjury- Oh, come now, it was just a little old white lie. We'll forget it this time, but please be more careful from now on, alright? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. <laughs> the judge had better be more careful himself. The dark alley is friendlier than that girl. God, me, I love you so much. You are... nearly perfect. Why'd she have to die? You're saying you actually saw the victim get pushed into the electrical pole? I know he doesn't look at look it, but Feeney can be a bit of an imp when he wants to be. Oh, really? I never imagined that he would cause an electrical cable to break. Feeney really is scary when he gets mad. Yes, he sounds like a very dangerous individual indeed. So let me get this straight. You were happily listening to music on your headphones while you watched the scene unfold. What? <laughs> Miss Faye, I have to ask you to stop battering the witness. Um, I wasn't happy. I was so scared that I couldn't even move. All I could do was stand there and cheer them on. Um, what? Cheer them on? What do you mean by that? Well, I wish the best for both of them. But they would eat that they would each give you the fight the fight they're all. Hmm. That's very sweet of you to be so supportive. And what happened after that? It's kinda odd that you'd be cheering him on as Phoenix is pushing him into an electrical cable. That doesn't sound quite right. There's handprints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, were there also prints found on the back of his leather jacket? Well, um, no, there wasn't. Madam Faye, may I suggest that you listen a little more carefully? I said that he crashed into him from behind, right? My Feeny wouldn't leave any prints behind in that case, would he? <sighs> Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry, I didn't actually see it. I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed, it would have been a horrific sight for anyone to behold. I don't figure out the contradiction here. It's all over. She didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so this is my best chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Think, Mia. Topsy report. Shoved him twice. Uh, it doesn't have anything. Where's the damn jacket? Uh, 
Also, it's funny that with this necklace, he shows that to everyone. Also, his, he shows his badge to everyone. That's enough, witness. I don't know why this one's right. I, um, what? I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeny likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It is 305. Why is the... I don't know, why is the... Eh, whatever. Fuck it. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, uh, and your point is, Miss Faye? It just looked like the other thing was shorter than the other one. My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered the power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55 p.m. Ah! Could you care to explain to the court, Miss Delisle Hawthorne, what exactly happened during that 10-minute interval? The defense proposes that it was during that interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Where's this all over? Nonsense! The real murderer! Even you can't deny that the time between the cable breaking and the execution are completely unaccounted for. Then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client Hella had left the scene was there a window of opportunity for the real killer. I like this music though. Miss Faye. Is the defense ready to in indicate someone as the real kill killer? Or indict. I can't indict anyone, though. It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor. We are ready. Very well. But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Faye. Real killer is Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. It could only have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Huh. How can you? The defense is grasping, grasping at straws. Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Order, Miss Faye. What, what I mean, why, that is to say, Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day, however, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Uh -huh. How can you say something so mean, Madam Faye? Uh, I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge here. Phoenix? Your Honor, please, I have something I want to say. And you. You? What is it? Please, please strike everything the defense said just now from the record. What the? Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye. Dolly, she... She couldn't do something like that. Phoenix, I swear to God. Mr. Wright, get back to your seat. Bailiff, grab that man. No! Oh. At you. Don't sneeze on me. Leave my dolly alone. That boy. Oops. <laughs> Grossberg? <laughs> He's gotten himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. It seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident in your newspaper clipping. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. You'd better take a good look at it. 
Yeah, 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 gross bird. Uh, just police report. Uh, victim Diego Armando, age 28. Occupation lawyer. Suspect Dahlia Hawthorne, 19 at the time. No, what? Okay, there. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vicinity or on the subject suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. Why was she suspect? Hey, no, no, no. Details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Oh. That's why she cares. Do I get court record about him? No. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I, I, that is, I... May I interrupt you for one moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Don't you worry, my dear. I have this situation well in hand. Miss Sniffle. All right, that is, I, um, go right ahead. Madam Faye, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet Dougie? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swall, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you that you should let me handle this. Queep. Oh, I'm sorry, please go ahead. How can you say that? I am absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame it is ludicrous. This is all just too much for my poor little- for poor little me to bear. I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then... The same day the two of them accidentally met, meet. What's in here again? It's a bottle? Small bottle necklace. Probably a poison in there. Hold on to it while she's investigated. No poison on her person. Smart girl. The defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Further testimony? About what? What, uh, what about? About the event in the day when she first met the defendant, v Mr. Phoenix Wright. What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, that yeah, she, in fact, has a very good reason. Well then, the court grants the defense's request. Young lady? Would you mind say, staying on just a little bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia Hawthorne. How I meant, Feeney. I first met my darling Feeney eight months ago. It's like we were de destined to meet in this very courtroom's courthouse's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey wovey. We, oh my oh, God, Phoenix. We're so lovey wovey. We lit literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Mr. Wright, do that again and you will be held in contempt of court. And now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. So until that time you had been dating Duck Swallow? Yes, I'm a real fool, I know. Letting my emotions change so quickly, I'm ashamed of myself. No, not at all. Look at me, I'm infamous for changing my mind. 
My critics have even taken to calling me Judge Fickle. Oh, oh. Maybe you should look for a different line of work. Despite that, however, you always see, always, always hands down the correct verdict. Yeah, always. That's why some people also call him the great Judge uh, Genie. Judge Genie. Sure. The courthouse's reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madame Fay. After all, Feeney was. Feeney was not only an art student, but he also wasn't also be planning on becoming a lawyer. I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? It's line of questioning is a waste of time and has nothing to do with the murder case. Miss Faye, I'm warning you, if this has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case, I have to remember the judge is on Dahlia's side. I'd better tread in carefully. Keep pressing. Your Honor, if you allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her, her to continue on with her testimony. Very well, young lady, I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? It pleases your honor, the answer is simply this. What paper? You're writing a paper on what? On the relationship between modern senior senryu poetry and the criminal underworld. That sounds like a fascinating research idea. Am I getting old? No, I've forgotten what I've forgotten. Again with the midlife crisis stuff. I mean, why did the girl really come to this courthouse? Isn't that what you wanted to know? And speaking of forgetting things, you haven't forgotten the police report, have you? I went through a lot of trouble to get it, my dear, so please be read it carefully. Calm down. Shut up. Wait, is Phoenix is included? Okay, no. Listen to me, Mia, the woman has the judge in the palm of her hand, you see. So the only way to discredit her is to find a contradiction in her testimony. I just wanted to see if they added Phoenix is. No, you weren't here for that. You were here because you had a court summons. Because you were being charged. Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? What is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Fay? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that in, in, uh, incident was in, listed here in this report. And that name is Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, this sweetie pie of everyone's eye. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order! This is unbelievable. It's true then, the loveliest rose can't hide the cruelest thorn. Miss Fay, that's not fair. You can't slander my witness with an unrelated case. Um. I winced in pain, will not allow it. <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Er, go, go, pardon me, you can go right ahead. It's true then, about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Hmm, expressed some interest, huh? Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tied the two crimes together. Now I'll just gotta stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, you're at really lit a fire in my heart, and not my box. You can hardly tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my hemorrhoids. Crossbird, please stop. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was liquid poison that was lethal uh, at just two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you've heard the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. Nope, nope, absolutely nothing, I'm sure. 
I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne. But I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today. I'm sure I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. All right. What the? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Ah, uh, Mia, you're glowing with a true lawyer's aura, my dear. The proud posture and self-confidence are absolutely smashing. What were you thinking about with the defense attorney? You're talking about. Well, I'm sorry, but that's confidential. According to the report, you were being interviewed regarding another case. The lawyer that was killed. He said he wanted to talk about an incident I was caught up in when I was younger. Why don't you tell us all about what the incident was? That's absolutely nothing at all to do with this case. Objection sustained. The defense's question is stricken from the record. You get involved in a lot of incidents, don't you, Miss Hawthorne? Well, I guess I was just born under a bad sign. Don't worry, Dolly. I'll protect you. You're the man, and now that is true love, young lady. Oh, Feeny. Please. Gag. Those two really make me ill, albeit in for decidedly different reasons. How long were you gone? I've already answered all those questions for the police. But if you must know, maybe 10 or 20 minutes. And where were you during that stretch of time? Using the toilet? What are you saying, Miss Faye? Toilet, my perfect little dolly doesn't poop. <laughs> Girls don't poop. You're the defendant, Miss Faye. Better luck next time. Oh, Feeny, please. The police have already looked into the whole matter. This line of questioning is nothing but a waste of time of the court's time. Objection sustained. Miss Hawthorne, please continue with the testimony. You guys are a bunch of assholes, and yeah. I swear I get you. About how much liquid is two teaspoons? Oh my god. Two teaspoons. <laughs> oh well, let me see. My bottle of eye drops says one and a half fluid ounces, which is equal to three teaspoons. It's about two thirds of that amount, huh? Poison was found in the lawyer's mug of coffee. It must have been after I left the table. Someone must have quietly sipped, uh, slipped it in there. special kind of poison. How so? Well, I heard that's almost impossible to detect. Uh, where would uh, something like that come from? Sorry, all I know is what I overheard the policeman say. He said something about using advanced chemical processes to purify it. Chemical processes? Well, well, that's quite impressive. Most impressive. The better question is, how did the criminal get something like that? Wait, was it? He... Part of pharmacology? Oh. Huh. Could he have possibly synthesized this drug? And given it to her? Just saying. Uh, I'm innocent. Yeah, and that's the reason they didn't arrest you. Because no one could show how you could have gotten the poison. I think that's a good enough reason, Madam Fay. She's right. Uh, and I think we've all had enough of Miss Fay's questions. So in essence, the main reason Miss Hawthorne was never tried arrested of this crime was because no one could show how she could have... Uh, obtain the poison. All oh, right, it wasn't a charge or filed reports. It was just suspect. Never mind. Now all we have to do is find a way to establish how she could have gotten some, right? Great. 
Now, how just did a student, uh, do it? How did a lit student get a hold of the poison like all things? Let's present him. Let's go. You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had an easy access to that kind of poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. Boyfriend? You mean the victim, Doug Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you all recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. Pharmacology? His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment, the culprit could never have obtained such a rare and special poison. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then it was a matter of slipping into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that was the one sitting at this very table. You. No! Order! Could it be? There's nothing but the baseless accusation. May I say something, Madame Faye? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Yes, that's true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true, in fact, the entire courthouse was up turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something that small. Excuse me! Madam, but this is a court of law. You're saying I threw the poison container away. I think you need to show some kind of proof. Proof? She got me good with that. Provide some evidence or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss May. Once we can come up with some evidence, we're going to lose this. The police conducted a full body search of Dahlia and of, of the entire courthouse. Yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. You're going to accuse the young lady of contaminating, committing a murder, and where's the container carried in? What happened to it? It's in this part. It's in this thing. You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. So the defendant was the witness as a compass. Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. What? But, but that's... Hmm. That's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? The day that the witness met and fell for Phoenix, Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago. August 27th, the very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the that one piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. Do it. No way! Order in the court. Um. Shut up, Phoenix. On behalf of Dolly, I object. Mr. Wright, control yourself. I won't let you bully her like this. Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? Because, because I'm madly in love with her. Hmm. Hmm. Madly in love? I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia Hawthorne want to date you anyway? Oh, well, that's just me. Well, I guess she must be madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright, please open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... Of that necklace. Keep you quiet. 
Dahlia Hawthorne was not and is not madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is that bottle uh, uh, necklace you love to wear around your neck. My necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she wants says the same th same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying. But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for her, you insist on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. No, that's a lie! Yeah. Mia, are you alright? The defendant, he's getting away. Bailiff, hurry, after him. Mia, Mia, are you alright? Yeah, I think so. That boy, he went completely insane. Wh where's Wright? Looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be brought back here soon. Thank goodness. Oh no. What is it? The bottle necklace. Miss Hawthorne's present. It's gone. What? That's terrible. Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy. That's the only thing that could have saved him. What in blazes are we supposed to do now? Miss Wright, this order of behavior is unprecedented in the history of this court. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright. What did he do with that bottle necklace? Forgive me, I, I, I'm sorry. It's okay, just give it back, just give the necklace back. You threw it away, didn't you? I hate it. You want? You, you ate it? It was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into little bits first. But yeah. Uh. Uh. What the? What? What is he doing now? Your Honor, you've got to stop the trial. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? That bottle you swallowed may have had some poison left in it. <laughs> it seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly, that bottle did not contain the deadly poison. How can you be so sure? I think that's obvious. As you can see, the defendant's still very much alive. As for the poison, more like a fledgling defense attorney's overactive imagination. So, what see. No, there must be some mistake. The bottle must not have had any poison left in it. Either that or the poison has lost its potency. There, there. It's all right, rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you took, that you placed this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us, the prosecution side too. For example, I would trust the witness Smith Hawthorne with my very life. Oh my God, you're such a fucking loser. 